getting a little bit more micro on the training, um, getting ready for these one day classic races, what's the bulk of the stuff that you're doing? And I guess the follow up question would be, do you have any workouts that you just like to do for whatever reason before a big race to make you feel like a little litmus test? Like, okay, I'm ready to go rip this up. Well, it's interesting because when we're here for the spring classics, we basically have a race every three days. So it's race, Recover. easy, easy race, yeah. easy, easy race. And so I'm actually not doing many workouts. And if I do a workout, it's maybe a four hour endurance ride to recon a course. Mm -hmm. And maybe I go hard on the climbs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most of the training that I do happens over the winter. And then when I come here, it's just race and recover. And that's really it. So pre-race day, I do kind of a 20 minute ramp starting from zone two, all the way up to, you know, zone four, maybe mm -hmm. just a minute or two at the end. And then I do three 15 second sprints just to kind of wake up the legs, mm -hmm. but everyone's different. You know, most people just do an easy ride the day before the race. And so, you know, everyone, some people do five minute efforts. Some people do seven minute efforts. It's just whatever your coach gives you that you start to get used to. And it, the consistency gives you confidence before a race. Um, but during the winter, I would say my most common workout that I do that's hard is three or four by 20 minutes at 300 Watts. And so I pick climbs and I try to do, try to mix it up. I try to find an area with more than one climb because going up the same climb four times can be a lot. Um, but that's usually my winter workout. And then sometimes I do, you know, ramps or intervals or things like that. But the 20 minute efforts are something that are very consistently built into my training to help build my endurance, my FTP, you know, all that. Um, are those just sub max or max? Like, are you going all out on the 20 minutes? Um, I'm going usually as hard as I can go for doing four consistently. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty tough. <laughs> I don't want your coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's like a really hard workout, but it's one that I always dread and I always finish having hit my numbers. And so I always think afterwards, wow, I'm so bad at us that I did that. I didn't think I could do it and now I can do it. And that I think doing workouts like that gives me a lot of confidence in my fitness because every time I go out and I'm like, I can't do it today. I can't do it today. You know, I'm not as fit as I was before, or I'm less fit than I was last week or whatever I tell myself. And then I can, you know, I, I just do it and I get it done. And it's not always perfect. You know, sometimes my numbers are all over the place within that 20 minutes, but if I do it, then for the next few days, I just feel really confident. And that confidence really helps my other workouts as well. So I think that's one that is really hard, but I really, I mean, I don't enjoy while I'm doing it, but I enjoy having it on my calendar because I know that it gives me a lot of confidence. So it sounds like you, from these little wins that sort of get strung together, continue to build the confidence. Do you believe in like the power of these little micro wins, just stacking them up day after day, little things throughout your day so that you're constantly getting that feeling of like, I'm winning and not even cycling related, but just like life, I, you know, it's hard to, this is, you're actually making me really think of athletes that struggle with confidence, not only on race day, but on tough intervals. And I try to think of ways of before they even step on the bike, like you're saying, Hey, maybe you need to take another hour. So you feel good. So that when you start, you're like, I'm ready to go do this and just let it go. It's just a bike ride, go do the best that you can do. But it sounds like you get this like winning mentality going and it's carrying over through your training and then it carries over to the next day. And then you're showing up on race day, like, Hey, I'm ready. Is that kind of accurate? Yes. I mean, I think, you know, if you've done all the preparation, then when you show up for race day, you shouldn't feel that nervous or scared because you know, you've done everything up until that point. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I know during training that the more I do, the more confident I'm going to feel at the start line. So that's you know motivating, but absolutely the small things add up and confidence makes a huge impact on my performance, both in training and in races. Mm. And so really small things. Um, like I can be more confident if 
I, well, first of all, every day I can finish knowing that I've accomplished something if I've done my workout. So no matter what goes on that day, I can say I did my workout today. It was really hard. I did. I did what I needed to do. I've accomplished something today. And I think as an athlete, that's really nice to have that in my life because people who aren't athletes, you know, they might have a really bad day at work or a really bad day personally. And they don't always have that rock that they can lean on. I mean, like I did this today, I accomplished this. And so I think as an athlete, that's really a nice thing to have as a boost of confidence every day. Um, but there's other things too. Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, having a support network. I think anytime I call a friend, I don't need them to sit there and uh, give me, you know, lots of compliments, but just knowing that I have them there, it's like a reminder, okay, I'm a good person. I have friends. I'm worth, you know, I'm a worthy person of being loved and all these things. And knowing that I have all these people in speed dial who are really close to me, my family, my close friends. Um, I think that just gives like a sense of personal confidence, knowing that you have that support network. Um, and then there's a lot of small things that people can do in their daily life that I think can give them confidence. Um, you know, there's a book, I think it's called the power of habit, but whether that's making your bed in the morning or having a healthy breakfast or flossing your teeth at night or whatever it is, you know, just doing small things that you can say, I feel good about myself because I did this. And those micro things, you know, start with one at a second one, a few weeks later at a third one, a few weeks later. And you can always look back after a few months and say, wow, a few months ago, I wasn't doing these small things and now I can do them all. And you realize how far you've come. And for me, some of that is bike handling skills. Sometimes it's bike maintenance, you know, um, you know, even small things like it took me half an hour to change a flat tire when I started and now it doesn't <laughs> like, those are the things that I think, you know, so many small things in your life that you can do to give you confidence. And for some people it's cooking, you know, learning how to bake a really good loaf of bread. Like there's small things that people do. And I think I'm, I'm a true believer that confidence in one area of your life can carry over to other areas of your life. And especially if you give yourself the freedom and time to reflect on those accomplishments that you, that you that's awesome. I love that stretch right there. I love that. That was like, that's the gem uh, for people to take home. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, do you have any bad habits that you're trying to break to like make you a better athlete or person to get more micro wins? Yes, absolutely. I love chocolate. I eat chocolate all the time. I'm you're like the awesome. heaviest. No, <laughs> but like, I'm, I think I'm one of the heaviest racers in the woman's Peloton. Like I, I have a, you know, a high power so I can get away with it. But if I ever want to go and do well in a Giro, that's, you know, super climbing races. I mean, I, I have power so I can get away with it, but yeah, I mean, nutrition is something that I eat healthy and that I eat nutritious food, food and feel my body, but I also love dessert. I love chocolate. I love Nutella and speculos, which is this thing I discovered in Belgium, which is like yeah. crushed cookies. Um, so I think nutrition is something I could do better at. Just, I love my treats. I love, you know, that's how I treat myself. Um, I definitely am not a cyclist that restricts myself with food. And I think <laughs> most are, um, but yeah, I think that's one area where I, you know, give myself a lot of leeway to just do whatever I want. Um, the other bad habits, um, I don't always stretch after, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, and that's changed a lot now that I'm not working because I was working full time until January 31st of this year. And I'd get back from rides and I'd hop right on a zoom call and I wouldn't stretch. And so now I'm trying to take better care of my body from a recovery standpoint. Um, other bad habits. Um, I. Those are good. I like those. My, yeah. Do you ever use any bands? I started getting a little bit more into band work as a part of my like recovery, just really light stuff, but just movements that I'm not doing on the bike. And I hate being like, I'm getting older. And I always used to make fun of my buddies who are like 40. And I'm like, God, I like, I'd be 28 or whatever. I'm like, I'm not even thinking about that. Now it's happening. And I'm like, 
those bands they're talking about and this foam rolling I have to do all the time and da 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 da. But if you if any of your teammates are doing them, hop in on a little band work. I think it's pretty. Uh, you're young, but down the road will become beneficial. <laughs> Absolutely. I think band work is really important for strengthening some of those ancillary muscles that you mm -hmm. use that fatigue pretty quickly in a race. Um, particularly glutes and core, I think are two things that you really need to have to finish a race feeling strong. I think um, my, or Swanier said to us, you know, when your glutes and core fatigue, that's when people start to fatigue on the bike. And so if you can keep those muscles strong, you'll last much longer in a race you know, a lot of people think it's just about quads, but it's not. Um, and so I think <laughs> band work is something that I, it's in my schedule to do and I hate doing it, but I know it's good for me. So it's just, you know, it's like, here's your motivation broccoli when you're young, it's just, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the last thing I want to do, but I know it helps. So sometimes I skip it and that's a bad habit, but I try to do it whenever I can. So I've got just a few more questions before I know we're getting up on an hour. I don't want to take up a ton of your day here. What's you mentioned nutrition. What has evolved maybe as you've gone from rowing to cycling has nutrition stayed the same. I mean, you've been an athlete for such a long time that maybe your preferences have changed or maybe, I don't know if like carbohydrates are different between rowing. I mean, you're putting out a ton of caloric output in that sport as well. Have you, what's, have you had to like tweak anything as you've moved along or have you been like steadfast on one way of like, this is what I eat. This is what I do. Da, 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 da. It's evolved a lot. So I started out as a heavyweight rower when I was in college, which, um, I ate whatever I wanted. And at times I ate way too much. <laughs> and then I actually switched to lightweight rowing because I was five foot six inches, which was actually short for heavyweight rower. I was kind of on the border. Okay. And so I had to cut weight for lightweight rowing. So I ate really healthy and I was much more strict with my diet. And then when I started cycling, it was somewhere in between where I didn't have to be a certain weight. So for lightweight rowing, I actually had to step on the scale every Friday and I couldn't mm -hmm. race unless I hit a certain weight. Mm -hmm. So with cycling, the power to weight ratio is important, but it's not uh, I can still race regardless. <laughs> and so, um, it's much more on me. Um, so I'm a little more flexible than I was as a lightweight rower, but I'm also more conscious than I was when I was a heavyweight rower. Um, so I would say that the thing that's evolved the most though, is eating while I exercise. So the before, during, and after, um, caloric intake, I think when I was in high school and even college, I would eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then maybe have, you know, a small snack before I went out to ride. And now I eat so many more calories on the bike and I've noticed such a big difference when I have long rides, how important it is to fuel while you're in the middle of a workout. So filling your bottle with Gatorade, having snacks in your pocket, and then making sure you have a protein shake right after, um, that's been the biggest thing for me is just the timing of when I eat. It's less about what I eat and more about the timing. I think a lot of people focus too much on what they're eating, how many calories they're eating, but they don't focus enough on when they're eating. That's really interesting. And I'm a huge fan of eating the right calories. <laughs> I think, I think you should always try to eat the right calories if possible. I'm just, when it, I think people, yeah, focus a lot on the amount and not on the timing and the timing I think is just as important. When you say the right calories, meaning carbs before a ride or protein after a ride, or what, what do you, what's the right for you? <clears throat> the right macronutrients, but also nutritious food. And so, okay. you know, if you're going to eat carbohydrates, maybe having some grains instead of white bread, you know, or having something instead of pure sugar. Um, at the same time though, you know, there's a lot of gels and bars that you can eat while you're riding and they're not that different from a Snickers bar or, you know, pure sugar. So I think sometimes you can give yourself a break. Um, but for me, it's just trying to fill your calories with make sure that your calories are nutritious calories and then making sure you're taking the right macronutrients at the right time. So, you know, don't, don't eat, you know, a, like don't skip on the carbohydrates. If you're doing high interval workouts, you know, you need mm -hmm. to be eating a lot of sugar during that workout mm -hmm. because, you know, whereas if you're doing a long endurance ride, maybe if you're trying to burn fat, you can get away not having as many carbohydrates. And so just, when you eat and what you're eating when 
has a really big impact on your ability to recover, your ability to hit the high sprints, you know, all of that. And every workout requires different macronutrients and different amounts of calories. So being aware of when you're consuming what macronutrients I think is important. That's awesome. What is your sort of mindset as, and this, you know, I think we can relate this to newer cyclists or cyclists trying to upgrade. You're finding yourself, you kind of, you know, from the very start of the podcast, you're in this new environment, you're racing at the highest level, you're trying to soak up as much from these mentors, you're stacking these micro wins. What are you trying, how are you getting your mind dialed? Is it anything, you know, you had mentioned before, maybe I wait and I meditate a little bit. Um, you seem very in tune with the mental aspect of yourself as an athlete. Are there any tips that you could throw out to people or maybe not even a tip, but like practices that you engage in so that you feel like sharp and level and just ready to go? Yeah, for sure. And I don't think this applies to athletes. I think it applies to humans. I think okay, just being, awesome. in touch, being in touch with how you feel at any given time. And that's something that I actually didn't develop until probably, you know, college or after college, just being so aware of how I'm feeling. So, you know, for example, there's times when I'm, I'm currently living in a house of eight girls and our staff, and I just really need alone time because I'm really overwhelmed. And so knowing that I need to go to my room and give myself that alone time and being easy on myself when, you know, the team's all together and knowing, you know, when is a good time to bond with the team, but when is a good time to really give myself what I need and take care of myself so that I can also perform for them. And sometimes there's, you know, you have to think about those things. Um, Sometimes I feel like I need to be alone. Sometimes I feel like I need to call a friend. Sometimes I feel like I need to be social. Sometimes I feel like I need to take a nap. Sometimes I feel like I need to get out and get a little sunlight. Sometimes I need to eat a little bit of sugar. Sometimes I need to not eat a little bit of sugar. And I think it's all just being so aware of what your body and emotions are feeling at any given time. And that is so important for your mental state, but it's also, you know, I'm a big believer that you're physical body is usually trying to tell you something. If you're craving a certain food, it's usually for a reason. Um, If you are super hungry in the middle of the night, you probably didn't eat enough during the day during that workout. So I think the same is true mentally. Like you're the same way your physical body gives you signals. Your mind is also giving you signals all day long. Like you feel tired, you feel overwhelmed, you feel anxious, you know, and being able to listen to that and give it what it needs the same way you would food to your body, I think is super important. And I think athletes in particular are so good at blocking out some of their physical feelings. Cause you have to, in order you know, to get through a really hard workout, it's like ignore the pain, ignore this, ignore that. But then as soon as your workout's done, you need to be able to hone in really well and stop ignoring those, those physical things. And so those physical signals. And so I think to be a really successful athlete, you have to know when to ignore your physical signals and when to be super in touch with, with them. I love and that. yeah, I think athletes always train themselves to ignore their physical signals and they don't train themselves as soon as their work gets done to just bathe in whatever they're feeling. And like, what is it that my body and mind need right now? So, or I think it's also too, there's the athletes that I think use their willpower at the wrong times of like you're saying, they spend so much willpower on not eating this cookie after they've done this ride and they keep kind of like beating themselves up and then they fall off the wagon, they go ham for a week and it's like, hey, if you just had that one little cookie, you know, every other day or you're, you know, you just had a great big ride and you did really well and you like gave yourself that reward. We're so easy to shame ourselves. Like I was horrible at that work and I suck, but we don't often be like, Hey, good job today. Like you crushed that. You deserve a little something as opposed to being like all in or all out. And I think that's, um, I've always been more of, you know, I'm a bigger guy, so I'm 83 kilos. So for me, my, just being a bigger person, my weight's going to fluctuate more. But I would talk to somebody who's small and like, well, if I, if my weight fluctuates like three pounds, like something totally off, I'm like, well, 
did you eat more carbs? <laughs> like it could be water. And they're like, well, I, I have a race coming up. So now I can't eat. And so now they're not eating before a big event. They're not doing well. And like this whole crazy chaotic nutrition self, like deprecating just cluster goes on. And I'm like, just let's take a deep breath and, you know, do the workouts, you know, try, listen, I just love what you said. I'm like, I'm actually like reteaching myself this. So that's why it sounds like I'm regurgitating what you said to remind myself to like be in tune with what I'm feeling. Why? And ask myself, why am I feeling this way? Um, I think that's an incredible tip, a phenomenal ending point. I, I can't thank you enough for doing this and taking the time to do this. Um, you will not only inspire more athletes. Like, I mean, from the career side of realizing like, Hey, maybe I need to go give this racing thing a shot. Or we had on another guest who was talking about, um, athletes that want to get involved in the cycling industry, but don't know how to take the jump, um, from a career side, but then from you being a pro athlete and just your whole journey, this was incredible. I was really looking forward to this one. And, um, I thank you so much for coming on and sharing so much knowledge. This was awesome. Kristen. Yes. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you. And um, I look forward to staying in touch. And um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. You know, I was a beginner at one point too. So I'm always happy to help new beginners. I was going to ask you, is there a best way for them to get in touch with you or what's like maybe the social best social way for people to follow along what you're doing this year in 2021? Yeah, I respond to Instagram a lot. I, I check my email less now that I'm not working. Um, so at Arctic Fox is my Instagram handle. It's A R C T I C, and then Fox like my last name F A U L K S. Awesome. So anytime you send me a message, um, I'll respond and give our team a follow. Give us a follow, and you know um, that's how I post about my races and how you can watch and how you can support more female cyclists and the cycling community in general. So tune in. Uh, and I loved your put, you had a post that was like, tune in. Cause the more people that show up, it's more representation for women's racing. And so I thought that was like, I was like, man, she's in on not only for <laughs> herself, but her team, the sport, like it was bravo, bravo. So, well, best of luck to you guys, seriously, to do this on the, the night before your race is amazing and uh, wish you the best of luck, crush it. And we'll be cheering from afar. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. See you later, Kristen. Bye. Bye.